right next important industry is sugarcane industry so it is also agro based industry only the raw material sugarcane it is coming from the agriculture sector only right sugar industry is one of the other important industries right so if we see uh, some of the brief introduction of the sugar uh, industry so it is the second largest agro based in industry in india after the textile industry good morning students welcome back to plutus is i hope your uh, preparation is on track and uh, you are uh, doing good progress right so with that uh, spirit we will go forward and uh, today is our 44th day and uh, today we are studying about industries and uh, industrial regions right this topic is also very important from the point of view of examinations uh, you will come to know about it uh, in the previous uh, year questions that we will discuss so right so this is the last topic last topic in geography right so after that we will move into the economics we will move into the economics subject right so this is also a very important topic from the point of view of examination so try to concentrate right so industries basically uh, there are many classifications uh, one classification is micro small and medium enterprises uh, msme and uh, big industries are there so many uh, i mean the basis for division is kind of very uh, many basis are there for division of industries one is based on the size next is based on the investment next is based on the we can say ownership right if you ownership if you see government sector private sector there will be you can say joint industries uh means both the government and the private players they will have uh some proportion of you can say ownership in that uh, <coughs> uh industries those are called joint industries or joint vendors next one is industries uh industries that will be run in cooperative sector right cooperative cooperatives so many number of owners uh, will be there so these uh, i mean on the basis on different basis we can divide the industries into several uh, we can say divisions here in this lecture we are following uh, we are dividing the industries into uh, i mean into various categories based on the raw material the kind of raw material they will use so on that basis we are going to see the division of uh, industries and we are also going to discuss some of the most important industries when it comes to india the cotton and textile industry iron ore industry iron and steel industry sugarcane industry etc so these kind of industries we are going to study right so before that we will uh, learn some basics about the industries and the manufacturing processes right so manufacturing defi definition if we see it involves process of uh, processing of natural resources into more useful items known as finished products so this is the basic definition of manufacturing right finished products are der derived from raw materials which can be in their natural natural form for example cotton wool iron etc or in semi processed form a uh, form such as cotton yarn pig iron etc they are further used for making the goods right so finished uh, products either can be derived from the natural products or from semi processed products right so interconnectedness of industries if you see so the finished products of one industry often serve as the raw material for another industry creating a symbiotic relationship between the sectors so for example agriculture sector produces or provides uh wheat 
right so this wheat will be converted into wheat flour wheat flour wheat flour we can say uh, it is the semi uh, processed product so this product wheat flour further will be used to make we can say if you go to hotels and restaurant we will get rotis so this wheat flour or wheat acts as a raw material for the hotels so this is the i mean one product uh, acts as a raw material for the another uh, we can say another sector or another industry so in this way there is a symbiotic relationship between the industries right so this interconnectedness it enhances the value chain and contributes to economic development by adding value to the raw materials so in this way value will be added to the raw materials same example if you see first wheat is there let's say for example 1000 uh, 1000 rupees for quintal quintal example i am taking so when this wheat is converted into wheat flour wheat flour or atta let's say it is 1500 per quintal let's say if it is this atta is converted into roti or chapati let's say for example the rate of 1 quintal chapati is or to for example 2000 rupees uh, that price of that we can say roti sar chapati is, is 2000 per quintal so here in every stage here 5000 rupees has been uh, 500 rupees has been added here also 500 rupees have been added so in this way the raw materials have been uh, have they have been added value at every stage so in this way these raw materials are contributing to economic development uh, at every stage value is by, uh, value is being added to them right after that if we see the importance of industrial development so economic development is closely linked to industrial development so industrial development is very very important for economic development because if you see the developed countries all the developed countries so before they are called uh, they are being called as the developed countries industrial revolution has occurred in them industrial revolution has occurred in them so the industrial revolution it has started in united uh, kingdom uk later it uh, spread to many other european counterparts like france russia germany later it uh, spread to american continent usa become industrialized next it uh, spread to asian countries also for example japan the recent country after we can say world war 2 to witness industrial revolution is we can say china so now we can call china as a developed country because it has uh, witnessed industrial revolution however if we see the case of india the industrial revolution is still missing we have directly jumped from agriculture to now the economy is dominated by services when we see uh, in terms of contribution to gdp so in this way because of this reason we can say the many of the people are still dependent on agriculture so we uh, we can say we have failed to bring uh, the excessive labor or the labor that i mean people who are dependent on agriculture into industry so directly before the uh, occurrence of industrial revolution itself we have seen the uh, service revolution also revolution in the service sector so approximately 55 to 60 percent of the we can say contribution to the gdp that will come that comes from the service sector so we have missed the industrial revolution so still there are people who are working but they are poor they are poor because there are not sufficient wages service sector though it is contributing uh, a lot to gdp but however if we see the people who are employed there i mean the number of jobs that is provided 
it is very less so the job elasticity is very less job elasticity is very less in the service sector job elasticity elasticity we can say we provide uh, many number of jobs in the industrial sector because in service sector only highly skilled people or highly knowledgeable people are i mean they can only be uh, only be employed so when it comes to industrial sector we can employed semi skilled we can employ many number of semi skilled and low skilled people so in this way we can provide employment to lot many number of people right so this is the industrial revolution we are missing so when we discuss the poverty and unemployment in the main topics we will further focus on this issue right so uh, for now you try to understand that industry is very very important uh, when it comes to the economy of a country because with the industrial revolution only in the development or advancement of industry only we can eliminate the poverty from a particular country right so economic development is closely linked to industrial development we have seen that and industries contribute significantly to your country's prosperity developed countries like usa japan we have seen the example they owe much of their economic prosperity to highly developed developed industries conversely industry industrially less developed countries they may export export natural resources but import finished goods at higher prices leading to economic stagnation so yesterday i explained the case about the raw materials right for example when we were discussing the bauxite bauxite ore have said so india is exporting the bauxite raw bauxite and uh, in other way it is importing the finished aluminium finished aluminium from the other other countries like japan uh, like germany etc so because of this reason india i mean there there needs to be a change in this process instead of exporting raw material raw ores to other countries and importing the finished goods we ourselves have to estab- establish industries so that we process the raw materials and we produce the finished goods so in that way we can achieve development then we could become a developed country but however uh, india is missing this uh, that aspect so because of that reason we are still a developing country so if we understand the significance of manufacturing in india manufacturing industries contribute approximately 30% of india's gross de- uh, domestic product gdp highlighting their significant role in the economy these industries they provide employment opportunity opportunities to about 28 million people thereby serving as the major source of national income and employment generation so after the agriculture agriculture so the industry is the second uh, important uh, uh, we can say sector that is providing employment to the people all right so this is the significance still this is the significance still we have we have to go miles when it comes to the manufacturing sector or industrial sector especially in the manufacturing so india i mean the uh, contribution of manufacturing uh, for the entire gdp it is very less actually it is hovering around we can say approximately 10% however we have to take it to 16 17% and if further possible we have to take it to the 20% manufacturing uh, contribution of the manufacturing we have to take it to the levels of uh, around 16 to 17% or if it is further possible we have to take it to 20% of gdp uh, only the manufacturing uh, part so the manufacturing it is one of one of the core areas of industrial sector industrial sector so when we discuss the sectors of economy we will further discuss about this aspect the challenge or issues associated with the manufacturing sector in india right 
so this is the brief history of uh, modern industries in india so you can go through these developments we will briefly see so early industrial development uh, during 1850s to 1907 so some of the industries have been started by britishers pre uh, pre independence industrial landscape so there also uh, we can say a bleak uh, scenario of the industrial sector there because agriculture has contributed up to 60% of the total gdp as you all know during the british era deindustrialization happened de industrialization has happened whatever the cottage industries have uh, that have been there where uh, artisans were uh, there in the cottage industries they used to produce goods or manufacture goods however the british due to the british policies those uh, handicraft industries have been destroyed and artisans uh, they become we can say agricultural laborers so in this way deindustrialization has happened in india so whatever the industrial uh, development we could achieve that has actually happened post independence only right so that too we can study in some phases so first phase if we see 1947 to 1980 so after that as you all know the lpg reforms have been brought in so after that there has been a substantial growth in the industrial sector and also along with that service sector also all right so in this stages you can see the industrial development in india all right so now we will study various industries that are there in india so basically we are we are studying these industries based on the raw material raw material they use so in that first category of industries is agro based industries so they are depending on the raw material that is coming from the agriculture sector agriculture sector so those are called as agro based industries so the uh, we can say one of the most most important industry that is cotton and textile industry so remember this is the second most industry after the agriculture this is the industry which is providing highest employment highest employment to the people of india right so this is very very important or further we can say it is one of the uh, earliest industries in india cotton and textile industries right <coughs> the industrial development uh, india commenced with the establishment of the successful modern textile mill in mumbai in 1854 so the industrial development modern industrial development has started with india with the establishment of a cotton industry that is uh, cotton textile mill in mumbai in 1854 since then cotton textile industry has experienced a remarkable growth with the number of mills increased from 378 in 1952 to 1782 in 1998 so there is a remarkable growth has happened in uh, india when it comes to textile industry right production if you see it consists of three sectors mill sector hand loom sector and the power loom sector right so hand looms mill sector here the raw cotton will be turned into we can say we can divide the cotton textile industry into three sectors that is mill sector here large mills are there apart from that hand looms are there these looms i mean to weave the cloth or the fabric hand loom will be used i mean it is operated manually by the individual next power loom is there the particular loom to uh, we can say produce the fabric it is run by run on power so this particular machine will be run on power so broadly we can uh, divide into three categories if we see the ratios so 5.4% uh, those are large mills 20% is approximately hand loom and the power loom is contributing to 74% uh, respectively so here you can clearly understand the domination of the power loom in the cotton uh, uh, cotton and textile industry all right so because of the uh, when the power looms have appeared 
the handloom we can say weavers who are dependent or who are using the handlooms they have faced the stiff competition because the quality of the fabric uh, that is weaved on the power looms it is also uh, we can say quality is also good it is coming cheaper and also the multiple times when we compared uh, with the hand loom the power loom generate much much uh, we can say produce the fabric on a much greater rate so because of this reason the hand loom sector is uh, facing lot of problem however i mean because of this reason we uh, we have seen in the past many of the uh, weavers so they have started committing suicide because of the indebted indebtedness and etc many other reasons when we discuss the main topics we will also see this aspect distress in the handloom uh, sector handloom weaving sector so the uh, some other statistics is there cloth production has increased from 421 crore square meters in 1950 51 to 1794 crore square meters in 1998-99 so this is the there are figures about the per uh, per capita availability also similarly uh, export if you see export of cotton yarn cotton fabric and the cotton and the synthetic garments generated revenue of 2.6 billion dollars in 1995-96 so these are some of the facts about the cotton industry now we will understand the distribution so this is the major important aspect about the cotton cotton and textile industry state wise distribution if we understand so the cotton and textile industry is widely distributed across india with the mills located in more than 88 centers so maharashtra leads the cotton textile production with mumbai being a major hub housing about half of the cotton textile mills in the country other important centers in maharashtra include sholapur kolhapur nagpur pune aurangabad and jalgaon so maharashtra is the leading because the black cotton soil black cotton soil that is present in the we can say peninsular plateau so majority of maharashtra is having this uh, soil black cotton soil so these soil support we will uh, we have seen already they greatly support the cotton crop so cotton fiber is produced here so maharashtra include gujarat some areas of gujarat also so we can see the production of cotton so because of this availability of raw material mumbai has become the center of cotton and textile industry right so gujarat it ranks second in cotton and textile production Ah ahmedabad here is the major center Tamil Nadu it has emerged a significant producer in southern india with Coimbatore as a key center along with Tirunelveli and other centers are there so recently Tamil Nadu has emerged as an another center so we can attribute factors like the climate should be humid for uh, the cotton yarn the production of cotton yarn is an important to process or stage in the cotton and textile industry so once the cotton yarn is produced that yarn will be turned into fabric however if the moisture is not if uh, sufficient uh, amount of moisture is not there in the air so during the production of the yarn so the yarn will break away so because of that reason and also due to the availability of skilled labor availability of skilled labor the coimbatore region in tamil nadu it has become the center if you see in karnataka so bangalore mysore belagavi these are these regions have emerged as important centers uttar pradesh centers like kanpur itawa modinagar etc in madhya pradesh focused industry is focused in indore and gwalior west bengal if you see howra serampur murshidabad if you see rajasthan punjab haryana and andhra pradesh also they also contribute to cotton and textile production so this is the state wide distribution of cotton and textile industry in india right so in this image you can see uh, the regions in that are there in pink color they are all the uh, cotton and textile industries so coimbatore if you see chennai coimbatore and madurai in tamil nadu 
గుజరాత్ అండ్ ముంబై రీజ గుజరాత్ రీజన్ యూ కెన్ సీ రాజ్కోట్ అహ్మదాబాద్ సూరత్ వడోదరా అండ్ ఇన్ ఇండో రీజన్ మధ్యప్రదేశ్ నాగ్పూర్ రీజన్ మహారాష్ట్ర ముంబై అండ్ సోలాపూర్ హియర్ యూ కెన్ సీ సో ఇన్ కోల్కతా అండ్ ముర్షిదాబాద్ ఆల్సో కాటన్ అండ్ టెక్స్టైల్ ఇండస్ట్రీస్ ఆర్ దేర్ రైట్ సో దిస్ ఈజ్ ది స్ప్రెడ్ ఆఫ్ ది కాటన్ ఇండస్ట్రీ ఇన్ ఇండియా అవెవర్ కాటన్ ఇండస్ట్రీ ఈజ్ ఆల్సో ఫేసింగ్ లాట్ ఆఫ్ కాంపిటీషన్ ఫస్ట్ ఈజ్ దెర్ ఈస్ స్టిఫ్ కాంపిటీషన్ ఫ్రమ్ బంగ్లాదేశ్ బంగ్లాదేశ్ అండ్ ఆల్సో వియత్నాం so when we see the exports of cotton uh, textiles so india is facing lot of stiff competition from bangladesh and vietnam because these countries have uh, liberal trade agreements liberal liberal trade agreements with other countries also the cost of production cheap labor is being uh, is available in bangladesh and vietnam so because of uh, these kind of reasons india is facing stiff competition from them however bangladesh and vietnam they are uh, striving for forward when it comes to ready made garments ready made garments so we can say india is lagging behind in this area ready made garments we are only producing fabric we are not focusing on ready made garments this is one reason one problematic area next problematic area if you see the focus is only on the cotton textiles we are not focusing on the synthetic textiles here also we have missed the bus so we are losing opportunity here because cotton textiles are only suitable in summer season what about the winter season winter clothes and also the sports sports related uh, clothes so there is a big big market evolving in this area also so we have to focus and encash in this stages in these areas then we can witness a revolution in cotton and textile industry another third problem we can say the obsolete technology obsolete te- obsolete technology or we can say old technology in the textile industry right so whatever the machinery that we are using it is old and outdated so we could not produce good material uh, good quality textiles Uh, through this uh, whatever the machinery that is available so we have to modernize the tech, uh, textile industry also we have to modernize the textile industry so these are some of the problematic uh, areas when we see when we see the textile industry in india so when we discuss the mains related mains uh, mains topics we will further devolve on this area because this area is very very important from the main uh, from the mains points uh, points uh, mains point of view we will devolve further into it when we discuss the mains related topic so for now discuss these things so if we see the factors that have made possible the location of textile industry in ahmedabad mumbai pune region so ahmedabad it comes in gujarat mumbai maharashtra and pune region so in the map also we have seen this is the major area where the textile and uh, cotton and textile industry is located one factor we have understood the raw material availability further we will try to understand other factors also so first is availability of raw material because the black cotton soil because of the presence of black cotton soil in the gujarat and maharashtra state so availability of capital also capital means investment so in uh, maharashtra in uh, Ma- uh, mumbai and uh, ahmedabad the we can say entrepreneurs were there entrepreneurs who were willing to invest in the cotton and textile industry so they have started large mills by investing so b- this also added another factor all right next is means of transportation so this has also developed uh, you can say uh, the well <coughs> developed uh, road and rail networks in this region they have ensured efficient transportation of raw material finished products and machinery connecting the textile industry with the markets across india accessibility to market so as you all know these areas are one of the highly densed highly densed populated areas 
so they have provided the market also for the finished cotton fabric next is nearness to ports so because of the nearness to ports the export becomes easy export becomes easy so this is also uh, worked as a factor for the location of this industry cheap labor so the region benefits from availability of skilled and affordable labor from the surrounding areas providing a cost effective workforce for the textile industry right next is availability of power or electricity the region enjoys uh, access to cheap and ample power supply which is crucial for sustaining the energy intensive operations like textile manufacturing process so the locational factors are also important uh, not only for prelims but also for the mains point of view also these locational factors are very important so try to remember them right next important industry is sugarcane industry so it is also agro based industry only the raw material sugarcane it is coming from the agriculture sector only right sugar industry is one of the other important industries right so if we see uh, some of the brief introduction of this sugar uh, industry so it is the second largest agro based in industry in india after the textile industry so the products uh, from the sugar cane or sugar industry are good kandasari and sugar collectively so it is a big, india becomes the largest producer of sugar products globally right if we see consider all these products if we consider all these products india becomes the largest producer of sugar products in the world so in 2003 if we see there were approximately 543 sugar mills operating in the country providing employment up to 2.5 lakh people right so production if we see sugar production is closely linked to sugarcane cultivation and it fluctuates based on the sugarcane production the total sugar production was 11.3 lakh tons in 1950-51 which increased to 201 lakh tons in 2022 sorry 2002-2003 but fell to 138 lakh tons in 2003-04 so it depends the production of sugar completely depends uh, depends on the production of sugar cane right so there are lot of fluctuations when it comes to sugar production in india distribution if you understand they are primarily concentrated in six states those are uttar pradesh bihar maharashtra tamil nadu karnataka and andhra pradesh right so distribution by state if we see first is uttar pradesh it holds a significant position in the sugar production sugar mills are concentrated in western western uttar pradesh uh, some cities are meerut muzaffarnagar shaharanpur etc it has the largest area under sugar uh, sugarcane cultivation but produced only one third of the total sugar production in 2003 4 indicating relatively low productivity so uttar pradesh has the largest area under sugarcane production but it is contributing only to one third of the total sugar production in india so this shows that the productivity is very low right so maharashtra you can understand it is the leader in uh, sugar production so most important state in peninsular india for sugar production is contributing to One fourth of the total production. So the major production centers include Nashik, Pune, Satara, Sangli, Kolhapur, and Solapur. Andhra Pradesh. So sugar mills are located in districts like East and West Godavari, Vishakhapatnam, Nizamabad, Medak, and Chittoor. So mostly in coastal East and West Godavari, these uh, fall under coastal plains. Right. So Nizamabad and Medak. Uh, these come presently in telangana chittur comes in rayal sima region of andhra pradesh so after the bifurcation these two regions nizamabad and the medak they fall in telangana if we see in tamil nadu important districts for sugar production include north and south orkat madurai coimbatore etc karnataka so the important uh, sugar producing state with the production centers in belagav mandya bijapur bellary etc 
Other states like Bihar, Gujarat, Punjab, Haryana, Rajasthan, they have also sugar mills contributing the overall production of sugar in India. So here, top 10 sugar cane producing states in 2020-21. <coughs> right, first number one state is Uttar Pradesh. Number two is uh, Maharashtra. Number three is Karnataka. Number four is Tamil Nadu. Number five is Bihar. Six is uh, Gujarat. Uh, 7 is Haryana, 8 is uh, Andhra Pradesh, Punjab 9, Uttarakhand 10. So these are the top 10 sugarcane producing states in 2020-21. Right. This is about sugarcane. Now we will understand the factors for localization of sugarcane industry. So first factor is proximity to sugarcane producing areas. So yesterday when, when, when I was discussing about the important crops, we have understood that sugarcane is a food loose industry or we can say food loose crop because uh, during the transportation, the if uh, <coughs> it loses its value, loses the value because uh, I mean immediately after the harvesting of the sugarcane immediately after the harvesting of the sugarcane so within some time only it has to be crushed uh, if this does not happen the we can say sugar content sugar content or sucrose content it will reduce so that content will reduce so because of that reason we will get less sugar production lesser sugar will be produced from that uh, whatever the molasses is is there so in the with the delay or with the delay in time delay in crushing the sugar content will go down drastically so because of that reason it is uh, known as the foodless industry so to overcome that uh, the sugar mills are located within the production area or sugarcane cultivation regions only that or, uh, in that area only the sugar mills are located uh, so because this availability of raw material it becomes one of the most important factors for the location of sugar industry All right next is transportation costs uh, the transportation cost of sugarcane is relatively high due to its perishable, perishable nature and the limitations of traditional transportation methods like bullock cart so this acts as a uh, we can say limiting factor so because of this region also the sugar mills are located within the sugarcane production regions so sugarcane can only be transported shorter distances usually up to 20 25 kilometers using bullock carts however tractors and trolleys and the trucks they have been increasingly utilized for longer distances nowadays all right next is capital so, or uh, we can say we can also call it as investment right so availability of cap capital is crucial for establishing and operating sugar mills effectively so regions with access to financial resources and investment capital they are more likely to attract sugar industry localization next one is market access so proximity to domestic and international markets it is also access important uh, factor next important factor is labor availability so as you all know labor are very important for harvesting harvesting or for that matter in the entire process of sugarcane cultivation labor plays an important role and also skilled labor is required for uh, working in the sugar mills so the availability of labor skilled and unskilled labor it is essential for the operation of sugar mills the regions with the sufficient labor force including both manual labor for sugarcane harvesting and a skilled labor for mill operations they are favorable for sugar industry in india next is power supply so to run the sugar mills power supply is very very important especially undisturbed power supply is required undisturbed power supply is required uh, because the crushing period will be very less once the sugarcane is harvested 
within this within uh, less uh, within some time only we have to crush this sugar cane so for that undisturbed or undisturbed supply of power is required so this act also acts as an important factor next we will study another important aspect that is reasons for shifting of sugar industry from north to peninsular india so when i was discussing about the crops so the dominant earlier uttar pradesh was dominant however the sugarcane industry instead of being a rain deficit area or water deficit area the maharashtra maharashtra witnessing lot of we can say sugarcane cultivation because the reason also i told the socio political reasons social and the political reasons are acting so the domination in the sugarcane industry or sugar industry it is being shifted from north to peninsular region region we have we 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 will try to understand the factors for that uh, uh, reasons reasons right so higher sugarcane production per hectare in peninsular india so sugarcane production per hectare is generally higher in peninsular india compared to northern india the tropical climate of south india is conducive uh, for the growth of sugarcane resulting in higher yields next is higher sucrose content in tropical variety of sugarcane this is also another important reason so the tropical variety of sugarcane growth in south india it tends to have higher sucrose content so based on the sucrose uh, sucrose content only the amount of sugar will be decided i mean the quantity of sugar uh, also increases uh, this is also one another important factor next is longer crushing uh, season in south india so the crushing season in south india is typically longer than in north india so the here because of this long crushing season the loss of uh, we can say the loss of sugar uh, quantity of sugar can be arrested so this is also one of the important factors next is this longer season allows for more efficient utilization of mill capacity and better management uh, of sugar supply right so what this exactly mean is so in north india the crushing season might end in 1 to 2 months however in south india it will go to 2 to 3 months the crushing season period so this uh, gives the opportunity for we can say harvesting the sugarcane accordingly and for better management of sugarcane supply so this will reduce the perishability of the sugarcane and uh, we can utilize the sugarcane in a mo much more better way so this longer crushing season that is available in south india it is also acting as a another important factor next factor is modern machinery in mills in south india so the south indian mills are they ha they have relatively established later so they have you can say advanced technology right next is prevalence of cooperative sector in peninsular india especially in maharashtra so the many sugarcane mills have been established in cooperative sector cooperative sector many sugarcane mills have been established so a significant number of sugar mills in peninsular india operate under the cooperative sector so in cooperative mills profit maximization is not the sole objective which may lead to more stable and suitable operations attracting investment and growth in the industry right so these are the factors that are helping the growth of sugarcane industry in south india however uh, this development this shift comes at a huge cost because the peninsular region peninsular region it is a water deficient region water deficient region however the crop sugar cane whatever uh, we are growing sugar cane it is a water guzzling crop water guzzling crop i mean it lead, it requires lot of water so we are growing a crop sugar cane in the water deficient region so this is leading leading to lot of ecological problems and the, it has of late become a significant problem so proper we can say policy measures have to be taken to address this issue so this region actually uh, the sugarcane has to be shifted 
from this area to water surplus areas like uh, especially eastern india so we can shift the cultivation of sugarcane to eastern parts of the country where the availability of water is more right so this can only be achieved with the proper policy intervention by the government let's wait and see so what happens in the future right so next industry is next type of industry is mineral based industry so the raw material for this industry coming from the we can say mining mining and quarrying so uh, i mean uh, re, i mean uh, before earlier this used to be part of the primary sector mining and quarrying however with the reclassification now this uh, component mining and quarrying it has been made part of the secondary sector all right so the raw material uh, for the mineral based industries that is coming from the uh, we can say secondary sector so this is second category of industries so the raw material required for these industries it is coming from the uh, component of secondary sector right so some of the examples of industries here are engineering cement uh, chemical and fertilizer industries they are uh, some of the important mineral based industries the major industries here are iron and steel industry it is the most important among the uh, mineral based industries right so we will understand some facts about the iron and steel industry it is the iron and steel industry it is the fundamental sector because the iron and steel produced from the industry it will act as raw material for many more industries so actually the heavy machinery heavy machinery required for other industries to work so that heavy machinery will be produced from the uh, iron and steel that is produced from this industry only so because of this reason it is known as the fundamental sector so it provides raw material for the numerous other industries modern steel industry in india began with the establishment of bengal iron and steel worker works uh, at kulti in west bengal in 1817 followed by tata and iron tata iron and steel company at uh, jamshedpur in 1907 and the india iron and steel plant at uh, burnpur in 1919 all in the private sector so these three have been started in the private sector only so if we see the public sector iron and steel plant so it is known as vishveshwaraya iron and steel works it was established in bhadravati karnataka in 1923 right after that we can see a rapid progress in the iron and steel industry after independence with the increased production capacity and establishment of new uh integrated steel plants and also we can see the growth of minor steel plants right. so if we see the expansion new and integrated steel plants were established in roorkela bilai and durgapur right so bukaro steel plant it was established under the public sector in 1964 with the collaboration from the former soviet union Bilai FC Bilai and Bokaro plants they were set up in collaboration with the Soviet Union Durgapur with the United Kingdom and Roorkela with the collaboration in, uh, in collaboration with Germany so try to remember these aspects also which in the, with the, which uh, uh, iron and steel plant has been established with the collaboration of with country after that Visakhapatnam and Salem Salem plants they were established subsequently contributing to the growth of industry production and growth if we see so these are some of the uh, figures about the production geographical distribution if we see major iron and steel plants they are situated in states like jharkhand west bengal odisha chatisgarh andhra pradesh karnataka and tamil nadu the chota nagpur plateau rich in deposits of iron ore coal manganese and limestone it hosts the most of the steel plants in the country apart from that we can also see the mini steel plants so apart from the major plants there are around 
200 mini steel plants in India contributing to the industry with a capacity of 6.2 million tons per annum. Right. Right. So mini steel plants, they typically produce steel from scrap or sponge iron and are an important component of the iron and steel industry. However, you should understand that still India lagging in producing high quality high quality iron and steel iron and steel so uh, here also we have to work and we have to focus on the uh, high quality production of iron and steel so here you can see the steel plants uh, <coughs> the uh, plants names that are there in the blue color they are established in the private sector and the steel plants that are uh, in the red color they are public sector i mean they are established by the government so vishweshwaraya steel plant salem steel plant is in tamil nadu vishakapatnam steel plant it is there in uh, vishakapatnam andhra pradesh bhilai roorkela durgapur and bokaro we have seen these are the earliest steel plants after the, that have been established uh, uh, after the independence right Next, some, uh, if you see the steel plants that are there in the private sector, SR Steel, it is there in Gujarat, GSWC Ispat, it is in Maharashtra, GSW Steel, it is there in Karnataka, Jindal Steel and Power, it is there in Chhattisgarh, Tata Steel, we have seen it is in Jharkhand. Right. So these are the steel plants that are there in private sector. Right. right. So petrochemical industry, another important industry. So it is one of the fastest growing sectors in India, revolutionizing the industrial production in the country. Right. So if you see the products, these are the various products that are produced in the petrochemical industry. Key centers, if you understand, the Indian Petrochemical Corporation, it has established a significant petrochemical complex near Vadodara, Gujarat, it is producing diverse range of products. Other important petrochemical industry centers include uh, Gandhar and Hazira in Gujarat and uh, Nagathon in Maharashtra. So these are the important centers. Self-sufficiency, this industry has achieved self-sufficiency. So India is self-sufficient in the production of petrochemicals derived from the petroleum or natural gas. Right. So crude oil, before refinement has little value but during the refining process numerous products like kerosene diesel lubricants and raw materials are for the petrochemical industry are derived right as you all know india it is deficient in crude oil however the planners were uh, we can say intelligent and they have at least provided or established the processing units processing we can say refineries of the crude oil so this type of industry at least even though we are importing crude oil at higher cost the refineries have been located in India and they are providing some sort of employment to the people and also they are add, adding value to the crude oil by producing various products including petroleum petrol and diesel so if we see the exports basket of india exports basket of india the oil products or we can say i mean the derivative derivatives of the uh, <laughs> derivatives of the crude oil petroleum we can also call them as petroleum products so this these will be in majority i mean they will be one of the important components of our export profile so the planners they have made a made an intelligent decisions they i mean they planned that crude oil can be imported from the countries and the refineries have been established in india and after refining that the refined products we are again exporting them the petroleum products we are exporting them so in this way we are earning important we can say foreign exchange right so some of the important refineries we have if we understand so india has currently operates approximately 
18 refineries across the country so these are the some of the refineries so in the map we will see the some of the refineries so haldia barauni paradeep vaisag also there is a refinery chennai it is there <coughs> right so apart from that mumbai it has uh, two refineries two important refineries kowali in gujarat it has also uh, one refinery panipat in panipat one refinery is there mathura one more refinery is there so basically these refineries located at panipat and madura they are serving the northern part of the country so basically these refineries have been established to serve the demand or market so in establishing these refineries we can say market has played a crucial role or it uh, became the deciding factor it become the market has uh, become the deciding factor for location location of these particular particular refineries in the country so apart from that uh, the northeastern region has also some important refineries right so here uh, in tamil nadu also two important refineries are there so apart from that the private sector also the private sector also the private sector also started uh, establishing some private uh, i mean some refineries uh, with the ownership from the private sector so try to uh, remember the important refineries in india so in punjab in batinda also we have uh, one refinery so these are the refineries that are spread across india both the government sector and the private sector right next important category is knowledge based industries so there is no actual raw material is required so it is, we can say it is a white collar sector so it is a skill based uh, next is it is a skilled based industry so educated educated especially english educated english educated skilled workforce is required for industry so in knowledge based industry the it right it plays an important role right the advancement of information technology it has profoundly influenced the country's economy opening up a new possibilities for the economic and social transformation so the information technology revolution it has led to the emergence of it and it enabled services outsourcing uh, that is bpo and kpo which can cont uh, continue to experience robust growth in the country right if we see the software industry growth software industry in india it has achieved a remarkable growth and a surpassed electronic hardware production The government has established several uh, software parks across the country to foster growth of the IT sector. Right, the IT software and service industry account for almost two percent of the India's GDP. Right. So, if we see the uh, quality and international recognition, India's software industry has gained recognition for providing quality products. with many indian companies acquiring international quality certificate so tcs new no tcs is there wipro is there infosys is there so these have these are, i mean these it companies they have achieved international recognition so apart from that tcs is uh, tcs is there so these country uh, country uh, these companies achieved international recognition and they are providing very good it services right employment impact if we see the growth of it industry has significant impact on the employment creation with employment doubling almost every year however in the hardware development sector india is yet to achieve re re remarkable achievement so if we see the hardware sector countries like malaysia malaysia and indonesia and uh, taiwan also so they have achieved uh, milestones in the uh, hardware industry especially the semiconductor sector semiconductor and chip making chip making so we can say even though we have uh, achieved a good success in the software service 
in the hardware sector uh, we are lagging especially in the semiconductor industry to be specific in the chip fabrication we are lagging behind so countries like malaysia and taiwan they have we can say gained a lot of expertise and they are the market leaders when it comes to chip fabrication so we have also has to focus on this area to achieve further growth in the sector right so because this chip whatever the semiconductor industry or chips are there they are crucial for electronics electronics the best example is smartphones smartphones and other electronic appliances so because of the lack of available techn- availability of technology in the semiconductor industry we could not produce world class smartphones so because of this reason we are uh, highly importing the smartphone mobile mobile phones so in this way also we are losing important we can say foreign exchange if we could had this technology we could be producing world class uh, mobile phones not only uh, catering to the domestic requirement we could be exporting the mobile phones including alak, uh, another uh, other electronic uh, appliances however we could not do this because of the absence of we can say uh, fabrication technology when it comes to semiconductors and chips right all right so this is about the important uh, industries we have seen categories of industries we have seen and also we have seen some of the important industries and their distribution across the country right so before that if we see the distribution of uh, distribution of it industry so major centers are bangalore bangalore mysore we can say bangalore and mysore we can say so we can say karnataka is the leader when it comes to it related services after that hyderabad is there hyderabad chennai after that noida and gurgaon and another center is another important center is so pune also it is emerging as an important it service so these are the some of the important centers uh, where the it sector has been located bangalore and mysore region in karnataka hyderabad in telangana chennai in tamil nadu pune in maharashtra and noida and gurgaon when it comes to delhi so try to be aware of the locational factors for uh, the it industry industry to be concentrated in these regions so especially the uh, engineering colleges that have been established especially in karnataka and andhra pradesh undivided andhra pradesh they work work the miracle for the growth and development of and uh, it industry in these two states both in andhra pradesh uh, sorry karnataka and undivided andhra pradesh so the english education english medium education or we can say english education it has produced the highly skilled labor or skilled human resources which is skilled and also which is english educated english educated so it uh, has worked as the real backbone for the growth and development of industry in these regions apart from that the spirit of entrepreneurship spirit of entrepreneurship by the some individuals like narayan murthy so if you see the leaders they have started the industries in the it sector and because of that the industry it industry has boomed in the country right so try to be aware of the other uh, locational factors also also remember why the in it industry has not spread into some states like uh, bihar uh, jharkhand odisha so still these states has to witness the it sector growth so try to know about the reasons why the it industry did not go there so majorly the reasons are about the skilled labor only so the education has not that much percolated especially the english uh, education it did not percolate down into these states so because of these uh, because of this reason the states have the, these states are yet to witness the Uh, growth of it sector in right. so this is about the it industry now we will see the uh, 
ఇంపార్టెంట్ ఇండస్ట్రియల్ రీజియన్స్ ఇన్ ది కంట్రీ సో బేసికలీ వీ హ్యావ్ ఎయిట్ మేజర్ ఎయిట్ మేజర్ ఇండస్ట్రియల్ రీజియన్స్ ఇన్ ది కంట్రీ అండ్ అప్రాక్సిమేట్లీ థర్టీన్ మైనర్ ఆర్ మీడియం థర్టీన్ మీడియం ఇండస్ట్రియల్ జోన్స్ ఇన్ ది కంట్రీ వీ విల్ సీ ద లిస్ట్ ఆఫ్ దీస్ ఇండస్ట్రియల్ జోన్స్ ఫస్ట్ వన్ ఈస్ ముంబై పుణ్య రీజియన్ ఐ మీన్ ది ఇన్ దీస్ రీజియన్స్ వేరియస్ ఇండస్ట్రీస్ ఆర్ లొకేటెడ్ and they are benefiting uh, they are dependent on each other so there is a symbio- symbiosis relationship between the industries so those regions where the industries are concentrated those are ro- uh, known as the industrial regions so eight such major industrial regions are mumbai pune region hugli region it is in west bengal uh, bengaluru tamil nadu region so it is a belt uh, Uh, started uh, i mean comprising bengaluru and tamil nadu so here bengaluru tamil nadu so this region is another important region next is gujarat region next is chota nagpur region so here you know lot of minerals are also concentrated so because of that a number of chain industries have developed in this region chota nagpur region next is visakhapatnam guntur region uh, gurugram delhi meerut region this is the seventh region next one is last one is kollam tiruvananthapuram region so here in the map you can see this is Gul, uh, delhi gurgaon delhi meerut belt it is hugli belt this is chota nagpur plateau region or belt this is visakhapatnam guntur belt this is bangalore tamil nadu belt this is kollam tiruvananthapuram belt this is mumbai pune belt and this is ahmedabad vadodara belt right these are the eight major industrial regions next there are 13 minor industrial regions you also go through them ambala amritsar region shaharanpur muzaffarnagar uh, indore devas region like that there are 13 minor industrial regions are there in india right so now we will see some of the pre- previous year questions that are asked from this topic uh, all the three questions i have taken they have asked in 2023 only so this is uh, this topic is very very important try to focus on it first question is ilmenite and rutile abundantly available in certain coastal tracts of india they are rich sources of which of the uh, one of the following so the options given are aluminium copper iron and titanium so the answer is titanium so the ilmenite and uh, rutile they are abundantly available in certain co- coastal tracts like kerala so they are the raw material for titanium mineral right next question is uh with reference to coal based thermal power plants in india consider the following statements statements are uh, none of them uses sea water so this is incorrect because some of the thermal plants they use uh, sea water second none of them is a set up in waste water stressed districts so this is also incorrect many i mean some of the thermal plants they are located in the water stressed regions so there is crit- criticism about this also so this statement is also incorrect next one is none of them is privately owned this is also incorrect some of the power thermal power plants especially the latest critical thermal power plants they are being set up in the private ownership in the private sector this is also incorrect uh how many of the above statements are correct so none of the above statements are correct option is d so apart from the industry you have to you have to uh, be conscious you have to be conscious about the some of the environmental aspects environmental aspects about the thermal power stations then only then only you will be in a position to answer this question however further another elimination tactic here can be so these are the extreme statements they are extreme statements all the three are extreme statements so when it comes to ups prelims examination the extreme statements they tend to be incorrect in majority of time so in this way also you can eliminate the choices and you can come to the conclusion of the option right third question uh, consider the following statements statement 1 is India despite having uranium deposits depends on the coal for most of its electricity production yes this statement is correct we have seen though india has the resources of uranium and also thorium still 
coal is the major contributor when it comes to electricity to India. Second, uranium enriched to, to the extent of at least 60% is required for production of electricity. So this is incorrect statement. So this much enrichment is not required. Only 0.321% of enrichment is required for the production of electricity uh, in the nuclear power plants. So this much, uh, this much uh, enrichment is not at all required. So second statement is incorrect. So the correct option is C, option C. Option C is statement one is correct, but statement two is incorrect. Right. So these are the questions that are asked previously from this topic. So try to focus on this topic. Right. Thank you. Thank you for joining the class. Uh, see you next time. Until then, have a good day. See you next.